Hi everyone, I thought I'd take a couple minutes today to teach you all how to clean your saxophone at home. This is a really easy process and one you can accomplish with products you may already have in the house. I don't think I need to say this, but I'm gonna say it anyway just to be careful. Don't put your saxophone in the dishwasher or the sink. That was obviously just sort of a fun way to start this video, and the instrument that did go in that soapy water was one that had been damaged 15 years ago and is now purely decorative. So don't do any of that. This procedure is a lot easier, actually. There are a couple products you'll need to get started. Now, it's important to note that this procedure is for lacquered saxophones. So if you have a gold lacquer or maybe even black lacquered saxophone, this will work great. If you have a silver instrument, I'll link a few products below that will be helpful in keeping that instrument tarnish free and looking great as well. The first thing you'll need is a cloth of some kind. You can use paper towels if you wish, or you could use a microfiber cleaning cloth. I've linked one down below from Music Medic, which I think is really great. It's of course a more eco-friendly option and lasts a really long time. The second thing you'll need are Q-tips. These are great for getting into hard to reach spaces and doing some really fine detail work. The last thing you'll need is something to clean it with. I really like using Pledge furniture polish. It seems a little unusual, but actually it's used by repair techs the world over. It's really great, it's anti-dust and anti-static, and it keeps the instrument looking really, really nice. Spray the Pledge directly on your cleaning cloth. It's important not to spray the instrument itself because we don't want that cleaning agent to get in between the rods, on the felts, or on the pads. As you wipe down the body, take note of any particularly difficult spots. You might see some watermarks, maybe some dust, maybe some grime and oil. That's all normal. It might take a little elbow grease to get off, but it will come up. Using the Q-tips, get into all those hard to reach spots. Around the posts, by the tone holes, anywhere that moisture is potentially going to hide. This is especially common around the upper left-hand stack. Check by the B, the bis, and the A key. These are often spots where moisture settles around the tone holes. If you find your Q-tips are getting dirty, move on to a clean one. We don't want to keep using a dirty Q-tip because then we're just moving the dirt around. If I'm cleaning an instrument, I'll probably go through about 20 Q-tips. That's pretty normal. Once you've finished the body of the instrument, don't forget about the neck. Just as we did with the body, go ahead and clean the main tube and then the octave key itself. You might not need a Q-tip here, but if you do, go ahead and use it. There are a few areas on the neck that shouldn't be ignored. The cork can always use a good cleaning as well. You can use the pledge on a cloth to do that. And also the tenon itself. This can quickly get gunked up as well, and we want it to slide into the receiver as easily as possible. Using the cloth you sprayed with pledge, don't forget to clean the receiver itself. When both the tenon and the receiver are clean, we get that really satisfying sound when you put the instrument together. One thing I always caution against is actually taking the instrument apart. There's no real need to take the keys off the saxophone to do this, and that should really be left to the professionals. I do recommend, however, that you take your instrument in it at least once every six months for a clean oil and adjust, and let a well-qualified technician go through it and make sure everything is really working perfectly. And that's it, a very simple procedure that's going to keep your instruments looking great. So good luck as you start cleaning, and see you next time.